The Tom Woods Show, episode 749. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Hi everybody, Tom Woods here. I am in haste. I've got to get to the airport to get to Massachusetts for the Mises Institute event in Cambridge tomorrow. And tomorrow is... October 1st, 2016. The event is sold out, I'm sorry to report. I'm also happy to report that to some degree, but I'm sorry you can't get in at this point. All the seats are taken, but I'm in a bit of a rush, so we're going to do just a little episode today, just mention a couple of things. The first thing is that my free ebook I've been talking about is now available. It's called Education Without the State, and you can get it two ways. You can get it at nostateeducation.com, And you can also get it by texting the verb educate, educate, text that to the number 33444. Either way, you'll get that free ebook. It covers a lot of ground in a relatively short space, and it answers a lot of objections. What about the poor? Wouldn't only the super rich be educated? That sort of stuff. But also, how do I start homeschooling? What's that like? Can I do it? Also, things like, what if I didn't go to college? Now, I'm not saying that everybody shouldn't go to college, but I'm saying, what kind of entrepreneurial approach might I take that might be different from the standard graduate from high school, go to college for four years, majoring in sociology, and cross my fingers? What kind of strategy might I pursue that's different from that? So, and I don't want to be mixed up with people who say, Don't ever go to college is a stupid idea, because I don't think that's necessarily good advice. But I'm talking about the right attitude to have, the right outlook on your own life. And I think people ought to be looking for opportunities in more untraditional ways, because the traditional way just doesn't work anymore. The traditional way is you just go to college, you major in anything, you cross your fingers, and you wait by the phone. I just don't think that works in 2016. I think you have to have a better developed plan, and your opportunity antenna uh, will need to be up from now on. So anyway, we talk all about that, and then in the one of the appendices of the book, I have links to previous ebooks I've done. Bernie Sanders is Wrong being one of them, and another one being 14 Hard Questions for Libertarians Answered. So you can get two more free books linked from this one. So again, the way to go is nostateeducation.com or text the word educate to 33444. And naturally, what else would the show notes page be for if I didn't link to it there as well, in case you forget? And that'll be tomwoods.com slash 749. This ebook has got a lot of material in it that's drawn from the show. And a lot of it is drawn actually from some of the early episodes of the show that a lot of the more recent listeners will not have heard at all. And I hate to see that just languish and not be used because it's really good stuff. So Sheldon Richmond is in there. He wrote a, a great book called Separating School and State. I've also got Pauline Dixon and James Tooley from the E.G. West Center, and their work is really outstanding and extraordinary because they actually have gone around the world, and they've bothered to look at how people are really, in fact, being educated. What they found is a completely unreported-on phenomenon, absolutely unknown, not acknowledged at all up until their work, of an amazing network. Well, network makes it sound like they're all connected. They're not. An incredible phenomenon of private schools, low-cost private schools, that are educating the world's poor. And you would think, oh, the world's poor. How could they afford a private education? Well, it turns out they can. And these low-cost private schools are outperforming the government schools on every metric. The, well, with one exception, the playground at the government school seems to be better. But otherwise, they're outperforming the government school. So it's an astonishing thing, and it's, it is seen all over the world, and it was completely under the radar. So that stuff's being reported on in this ebook. Because, of course, there's a lesson to be drawn here. If these absolutely destitute places are able to establish low-cost private schools that the poorest of the poor can attend, 
Well, I rather think a wealthier country like the United States could at the very least duplicate that performance if push came to shove. So I hope you like it. NoStateEducation.com. She's a beauty. All right, so that's the ebook. A couple of completely random thoughts that occur to me before I go that I just want to say. One of them is from time to time you come across somebody on Facebook, let's say, who says, there isn't going to be an election in 2020 because whoever it is who gets elected who's bad will cancel the election. Or, I mean, I heard that there were some Ron Paul people who thought there wouldn't be an election in 2016 or you know, Obama was going to cancel it or whatever. Whenever you hear somebody say that particular thing, you know you're talking to somebody who has no idea what he's talking about. And here's why. Elections are the means by which the regime legitimates itself. They say, look, we, we held, it, we held uh, it open to an election. We had an election, after all. So, look, we really are a free society. Voting is like the sacrament of this whole democracy religion. So what their normal strategy is, is to make sure you don't really have a choice when you go in and vote. In fact, I remember Stephen Breyer, a Supreme Court justice, when he was nominated, he gave a little talk, maybe at, was at the, in the Oval Office, not the Oval Office, the, the White House, I mean to say, and he said something like, what an honor it is to be nominated for this position in a country that he knows 100 years hence will still be having free elections. Well, he's right about that. They'll still have the elections. There's no question they'll have the elections. There's, why would they want to cancel an election? The election is the, is the way they claim they get consent. They say, look, everybody voted. Look at all these people who voted. And if they didn't vote, well, it's their own fault because we have this open system where they get to choose. If they cancel the election, they undermine that. There are a lot of people who, stupidly in my opinion, buy into this idea that the regime is legitimate for this reason. And so they would be radicalized by the canceling of an election. There's no reason. They would never, ever do that. It makes no sense for them to do that. It undermines the greatest philosophical, ideological weapon they believe they have, which is that people consent to the system. That's the first thing. Second thing is, uh, some of you guys know on Twitter, I tend to get dragged into fights. I've been trying to resist that lately because I'm just too busy with a lot of travel coming up and the crews coming up. But the other day I did post an interesting item because we're all hearing about there's a massive upsurge in hate crimes against Muslims. Anti-Muslim hate crimes are on the rise. And this is, you know, we're told probably because of Donald Trump and all that. So as usual, it's, you know, I get suspicious about things like this. I want to see the numbers because I, I don't trust the left. Don't, don't ever trust the left and you won't ever go wrong. So it turns out that this is... Uh, it's the same tactic Krugman used in talking about deaths of pregnant women in Texas. He's looking at a statistical blip that's basically just statistical noise. It's not meaningful at all. Well, same thing is true of these alleged hate crimes. So, for instance, in Virginia, hate crimes against Muslims have gone up by 40%. Yeah, from five cases to seven cases. That's a misleading statistic from five cases to seven cases, that, that's not, that is of no significance whatsoever. Now, that isn't to say that these sorts of crimes aren't significant or we shouldn't care about them. I'm saying that that statistic is obviously misleading, and it's meant to drive a particular agenda. Well, so I posted that on Twitter, and I got some guy who wrote back and said, but isn't one crime, one hate crime, one too many? You know, I just, I can't stand people like this who, compl who he, unless he has an IQ of 50, he knows he's missing the point. Obviously, every crime is a tragedy, and we'd like to get rid of them all. There's no, that's so obvious, I, why would that even need saying? That is so obvious. The point is, is it, are you misleading people by using these wild, exaggerated terms when the raw numbers are basically trivial in the grand scheme of things. So I came back at him. He's a black guy. And I came back and I said, suppose I said, 
black on white killings have gone up by a hundred percent and actually they had gone up from one to two killings I have a funny feeling you'd be upset about that and then he came back and said no I wouldn't and the fact that you think I would shows what's wrong with race relations in this country number one I guarantee you he would absolute guarantee absolute guarantee but secondly who cares about this guy if he's upset or not you get an F in journalism if you're gonna say yep I have no problem with saying without any further elaboration black on white killings have gone up 100 percent or they've doubled without mentioning that the raw figures are rather unimpressive so anyway that's just driving me crazy and I had a few minutes before heading to the airport and you know who am I gonna tell this to right everybody's still sleeping here in the house who am I gonna tell this to so I told you that's all I have to say I'm, I'm moving on grab your free ebook text the word educate to 33444 or go to nostateeducation.com and you will get that baby delivered to you thanks for listening next next week I got some I got some interesting guests I've never talked to before we're um, I'll have uh, two weeks from now I got that fractional reserve banking debate but I got an anarchism minarchism debate between Walter Block and Jan Helfeld and I'm gonna keep Helfeld to reasonable length answers uh, in this thing so we can keep it punchy and not go on for two and a half hours and that's being scheduled right now so we got some fun stuff coming up so uh, tune in and see you next week become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day visit tomwoods.com to subscribe to the show for free and we'll see you next time